Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today we're going to be talking about optimizing our URL slugs. Optimizing your URL slugs in Squarespace is something you can easily do, but is something that is very often overlooked. If you're thinking, what on earth is a URL slug? I've got you covered. So your URL is your unique website page address. For example, the URL for this post might be bigcatcreative.com slash blog slash optimize URL slugs Squarespace. The slug is the part that changes depending on what page you're on and it always comes after your domain. So my domain is bigcatcreative.com and the slug for this page is the slash blog slash optimize URL slugs Squarespace. <laughs> So this video is all about optimizing the slug part of your URL so that it helps you rank better in search engines. It's best practice to keep your slugs tidy, short, and relevant to the corresponding page because that's just what Google likes. Squarespace automatically uses your page or blog post names to generate default slugs for your URLs. So most people don't usually even look at them. And although they're usually okay, I'm gonna show you how to make sure that they're optimized to their full potential. It's really easy, so let's dive in. Okay, before we dive in, I just wanted to quickly say, if your site is live, please be aware that if you are gonna change URL slugs around your site, this could lead to having broken links around the web. For example, if someone clicks on an old link of yours that goes to a page and you've changed the URL slug of that page, then they will end up on a not found page which is really bad. So if your site is live and you are planning to follow along this tutorial, I recommend skipping to the very end and watching the part on how to create URL redirects or click the link I've um, added in the description below for the Squarespace tutorial on that. Because if you set these redirects up, then you can avoid having broken links when you update your URL slugs, which is really, really important. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you how to optimize the URL slugs on your regular pages. So this will work exactly the same on Squarespace 7.1 and 7.0. Log into your site and click on pages. And then for the page you want to optimize, click the little cog next to it, which will open up the page settings. So I'm just gonna click on our homepage and that will open up the homepage settings. And you'll see here you have your page title, navigation title, and URL slug. So this is the perfect example of a good title and slug. You want your slug to be short, clear, not have any weird numbers or letters in it. Sometimes when you duplicate a page in Squarespace or create a new page, it will assign a slug automatically and it might look something like this or you know, have some weird letters at the end of it, but you just wanna make sure it's really clear and short and concise. With regular pages, this is a little bit easier to do because it's usually quite clear what you want the slug to be. Obviously for the home page, home is perfect. For the shop, you can have shop. For the gallery, you can have gallery. You know, really simple, straightforward slugs. The key here is just to go through and check them all because like I said, Squarespace can sometimes assign pretty random slugs to your pages. Sometimes they might even be called new page or something like that. So with your regular pages in your pages panel, you need to just go through and double check all of them and make sure they are good quality slugs. Now there is a slight difference in Squarespace 7.1 if you are using a template that has index pages. And you might not be, if you're not, just skip over this step. But if you are using a template that has index pages, this is an example of an index page here. And each individual section has its own slug. You can see here, this is the first section of the home index page, and it has its own slug. So I wouldn't worry too much about optimizing these unless you're using them for specific links or anchor links and I will link to a video about anchor links below. But if you're not planning to link to the specific page sections anywhere, then what you actually want to do in Squarespace 7.0 in a template that has index pages is you actually just want to click on SEO and hide the page. It's best practice to hide the individual index sections and then Google will see it as one page rather than lots of little pages. So I go into this more in my post about SEO settings, 
but this is worth noting here because you don't necessarily have to go through and update the slugs of all of these sections because you're actually going to turn it off anyway so no one's really ever going to be seeing those slugs and Google isn't going to be seeing those slugs. So more importantly than going through each index section and updating the slug is going through each index section and hiding the page from search results. And then this will index the whole page as one rather than indexing one whole page and 10 different little sections of the page. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is in your blog. So obviously inside a blog, you have individual blog posts and you really want to optimize the URL slugs for each post. So this is just as important, if not more important than doing your pages because blog posts are really important for SEO if you are blogging as an SEO strategy. So it's really important to update these. Also, I find that with the automatic URL that Squarespace gives your blog posts is more often than not a bit messed up and has some weird letters and numbers in it. So it's definitely worth checking these. So the first thing we're gonna check is the actual blog URL. So we checked our blog settings URL when we did our page settings and this one's called blog, so that's perfect. Then we're actually gonna go back into settings, click on blogging, and then check your post URL format. So Squarespace recently updated this, so it was best practice, but if you are working from an older site, you might have something different in here. I highly recommend, if you do have something different, changing this to the percentage icon and then the letter T, which is example here, you have your URL, your blog page URL, ours is just blog, and then you have your title, which is what the T stands for. It used to have way more stuff in it. It had the day, the month, the year, than the blog post title, which was totally overkill. So if you have other letters in there, I highly recommend changing it to percentage T and just leaving it like that. And then that's gonna give you a nice, concise blog post URL. Okay, so now we can go back into our blog and you can change your post URL by opening up your blog settings. So on Squarespace 7.1, you just click on the settings, then under options, you will have your blog URL here. As you can see, this is the one that Squarespace gave me, which is obviously terrible. So what we do is we update this to something custom. My post is called example post. So I'm gonna call it example post. Basically with blogs, you just want to use the main keywords and cut out all the fluffy words. So for example, this video is based on a blog post that is called how to optimize URL slugs in Squarespace and why you should. And I would probably change the URL slug to optimize URL slugs in Squarespace. Just keep it really short, simple and get rid of all of those fluffy words and just use the main points about the post. So it's important you do that with every single blog post before you post it. You can do the exact same thing over in 7.1 by opening up your blog, clicking edit, and then under options, you can update your URL here. So you'd wanna do the exact same thing with all your shop items. If you have a portfolio page, you can also do this individually for all of your portfolio items. You can see this one here is called project one dash and a whole bunch of weird letters. Again, it's just checking all of those page settings, shop item settings, blog post settings, portfolio settings, anything that can possibly have a URL, you'll wanna check it. So it's actually really quick and easy to do that. I highly, highly, highly recommend doing it before you launch your site or before you set your blog post live or before you set your whatever it is live. Because if you change it while your site is live, you might end up with some broken links. And if you have been doing that while you're watching this video, I'll show you how to fix it. But basically broken links are when people click on your old URL from either Google or a link that you've added somewhere around the web and they go to your site and they end up on a 404 page not found page because you've actually changed the URL slug now. So if you have done that and you do have some links that are broken, you'll wanna go back, go to settings, advanced URL mappings, 
and you can add some redirecting links here. So basically it means that when people land on the old link, Squarespace will automatically redirect them to the new link or the new page. So if you want to add some of these, you can use this little example here. So just copy this. So what you do is you'd put your old URL here and you put your new URL here and then just leave that little arrow and the little 301 because that's going to help Squarespace understand. So if you changed the name of a blog post URL, you'd want to add your blog name here and then the post old post title here. Then we've got blog again and then we would add our new post title. So basically just from old to new and then click save. And this will make it so that anyone who ever lands on the old post will end up on the new post. So you only need to do this if your site is currently live and you're changing URLs. But if your site isn't live, don't worry about it yet because no one will actually have the old URLs to click on. So that's why it does make it a lot easier if you do it before you set anything live. And that's it for optimizing your URLs. Just remember to go through each page or collection or item settings. If you can add a URL to it, then I recommend optimizing it as best you can. Adding those keywords, taking out those fluff words like the and what and where, and just leaving in those keywords that describe the page or article or item. And that will make Google and any other search engines really happy. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.